What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So yes, my voice does sound uh, hoarse because uh, you know, I kinda got a little bit excited from tonight's live stream reaction of checking out the 2024 Royal Rumble pay-per-view or PLE, whatever you wanna call it, so call it. So bear with me, my voice is, you know, kinda gone, but it, you know, it happens. You know it was a good time if I lost my voice. Shout out to everybody that was a part of the live stream reactions. You guys showed up on YouTube and Twitch. We appreciate y'all. We had a great time tonight. This was a fun, fun show for me. I enjoyed the Royal Rumble. The hype for it was really intense. Now, I normally do with my thoughts and opinions. Um, I like to go through each match and stuff like that, but I, I, I want to kind of switch it up like I did last uh, for uh, last time for the uh, for the uh, I think it was Survivor Series. I kind of want to switch it up because I don't want the video to be too long. I really just want to talk about the most important things that happened on the show, and we're gonna start it off right away because I know what everyone's here to talk about: Cody Rhodes being the guy to win back-to-back -back royal rumbles now i did not see that happening i honestly thought it was going to be gunther but i was very surprised that they actually gave cody the win here and we're going to talk about some of the stuff that happened in the men's royal rumble match um, um in a few but i want to make the mention of Cody and CM Punk being the last two. Once Gunther got eliminated, it was Cody and CM Punk. And they have been, I guess you could say, setting this up with the uh, Monday Night Raw, how that, that fantastic promo they had. They're having their back and forth. Cody hit the, uh, the crossroads. CM Punk hit the GTS. They're going back and forth. It's, it's a real tense situation. You don't know who's going to win. And then CM Punk hits Cody with the pedigree and he says something to the commentary team he's like um uh, and I actually wrote it down exactly what he said CM Punk hits Cody with the pedigree been on the ring and says can you believe that shit like he was talking to commentary and you can hear a lot on the camera say can you believe I hit that shit out of all moves can you believe me hitting the pedigree then at this point he thinks he, he has it so CM Punk, he tells, uh, he like he's staring at the hard cam as he's about to pretty much toss over uh, Cody Rose. He said, I didn't wait 10 years to lose to Dusty's kid. Once he said that, I was like, that's very heelish. Like, that's on some Roman Reigns talking trash during a match heel like maneuver. I was not expecting that, but I like it. Because once he said that, that's when I knew, I don't think he's going to win now. I think because he got arrogant, because he got a little, he, he you know, he started feeling himself. I think he's going to lose. And lo and behold, he ended up losing. Cody reversed it and tossed him over the top rope, which I thought was so poetic that he was talking all that trash and he, he's the one that lost. And it, it goes back to the promo he had with Cody. Can we be friends afterwards? Now you can, Cody can ask that same question. Are we still friends afterwards? Because CM Punk felt really confident. And I like that was a little bit of heelish. I like the shades of heel there. Like, he, I, I, I appreciate that. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens going forward. I can definitely see him winning the Elimination Chamber facing Seth Rollins. And I feel like whoever faced Seth Rollins, they would need to be a heel because we know Seth Rollins has a legitimate injury. So whoever beats him, Seth will always have that out because of his injury. If you have CM Punk be a little bit more roguish, a little bit more heelish, I think you can work with that. But overall, I was very surprised. That was so surprising. I did not think... Cody was going to be the one to finish, uh, to win the Royal Rumble. Again, back to back. And of course, he points at the sign of the pyro. And then you have Roman and Seth sitting in the press box seats, like all the way up at the top. And he looks right at Roman. We all knew. He wasn't even going, he wasn't even going to look at Seth. He looked right at Roman. Roman gets the title from Paul Heyman. 
He's holding up and he looks right at him. He's like, you already know what's up. And I do believe he will finish this story. That I would be so surprised if he does it only because there's no way you give this guy back-to-back -back Royal Rumble wins and he does not complete the story. And I do think he will finish the story with somewhat of assist from The Rock. I do think The Rock will be someone that tries to play a little bit of defense when we know Solo and Jimmy are going to probably get involved in the match at WrestleMania this year. So he will be that catalyst to jumpstart the Roman and Rock feud going into WrestleMania 41. So, but we'll see how things play out. But I enjoyed it. I picked Gunther to win it, but I was very surprised that uh, Cody won it. We also got to talk about the MVP of the men's uh, Royal Rumble match. I got to go ahead and, and give that to, to Braun Breaker. Braun Breaker showed up and showed out tonight, bro. Braun Breaker entered in at number 20 and started packing people up with the speed and intensity, bro. And I love that. The crowd was doing the hoo, 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 you know, like a dog. Like he, he showed out tonight, and I thought that was fantastic. MVP of the Men's Royal Rumble. He eliminated Jimmy Uso. He eliminated Finn Balor. Uh, he even stands up to Gunther and gives Gunther a, a very vicious spear. And he's doing this as soon as he gets into the match. Um, Braun hit a beautiful midair spear to Ivar. Like, there was so much going on at the time, the camera almost missed it. Um, and then there was a situation with Pat McAfee getting involved in the match. I do think that was a wasted spot. You could have given that maybe to a uh, Trick Williams or somebody else. I love Pat McAfee, but it was a waste of time because Braun Breaker and Omos was in the ring and Pat McAfee just eliminated himself because he didn't want to get in the ring. It was a waste of time. I love Pat, but it was a waste of time. Um, it was cool. He was great on commentary. When his music hit at the beginning of the show, that was awesome. I just feel like he wasted a spot there. And then... Braun Breaker eliminates Omos by himself. I thought that was great. And then Dominic eliminating Braun, people booing. And this was so funny. JD McDonough, he's he is his character in WWE is just to get destroyed. He runs out to the ring. I'm like, all right, cool. He he go he gonna do his thing for a little bit, maybe help out Dom. Before he even got in the ring, Braun Breaker, who's already eliminated, folded him in half on the outside, killed him. Next person that comes in was R Truth. He sees JD McDonough dying on the outside. He picks him up, throws him in the ring, only for JD to get eliminated. I thought that was hilarious. I thought that was truly hilarious. Now, the number 30 spot. You got to talk about that as well. I know a lot of people are saying, oh, it's going to be MJF. If you thought it was MJF, I don't know what y'all thought. I don't know what how your brain processed that. But no, it was not going to be MJF. MJF was not going to be involved in the Royal Rumble. They still have a story that they're trying to tell with him and Adam Cole in AEW. It doesn't make sense for him to debut. He will be in WWE at a later time. He has some stuff he still has to finish in AEW. And it will be stupid for Tony Khan to let go of their biggest homegrown uh, talent. So, for those who thought MJF, what were you thinking? Sami Zayn being 30. I'm all for it. Some of y'all were saying, oh, no, nah, that Sami Zayn was a waste of a 30 spot. No, he wasn't. And that's disrespectful to Sami. Because some of you same people were sitting up there talking about Sammy should have probably won, should be the one to dethrone Roman last year. So stop it. Fickle. Anywho, Sammy being 30, I was all for. What, what didn't work is I thought Sammy would have been the one to eliminate Drew. I would have loved if Sammy was one of the final four. But he didn't. CM Punk eliminated Drew. In fact, Drew eliminated Sammy. Now, I'm sure they're going to continue that story, but I think it would have been even better if Sammy could have came back after getting taken out by Drew and eliminate Drew. 
You can build a match off that. They can still do it, but I think it would have been better. And it would have it would have made the him being at the number 30 spot feel a little bit more important because he was the number 30 spot only to be in there for a little bit and then to get eliminated by Drew. That was my only issue with that. Also, we got to talk about Andrade coming back to WWE. I, Andrade was um, number four in the Men's Royal Rumble. Got a great reaction. I love that. Seeing Andrade back in WWE is great things. Going to be very interesting to see what brand he's going to be on, but I can see him being on SmackDown again. It's going to be very interesting to see what they do with him, especially his interaction with Santo es uh, Santos Escobar. That's going to be cool. I'm looking forward to their interaction um, and his also his interaction with uh, some of the LWO members. So it was cool to see Andrade back in, uh, uh, in WWE. I was hoping they were going to do a little bit more with Jimmy and Jay since Jay came in at number one. Jimmy came in at number two. And they had their interaction. Obviously, Jimmy being uh, pretty much a joke. Always trying to dap up people to, you know, jump on on um, on Jay. And even though they got eliminated separately, I, Jimmy got eliminated first. I really did think that Jimmy was going to come back and screw out Jay. Like, screw him out in the Royal Rumble. But that didn't happen, which is crazy. I, I really thought Jimmy was going to be the reason why Jay ended up losing uh, and uh, getting eliminated. But that didn't happen, so maybe they're saving that for another moment. Also, like the stuff they did with Karrion Cross and Bobby Lashley. Uh, Bobby uh, in and in at the match at number 11. And Bobby Lashley ended up eliminating Karrion Cross. But that's when AOP had already came out. And then Karrion Cross ended up getting uh, Bobby Lashley eliminated. They started fighting. That's when the Street Profits come in and everybody starts brawling. I love that. I love that. I love even just Ludwig Kaiser just walking down the ramp as he sees everybody brawling up the ramp, trying not to get involved. I also like the fact that uh, Kofi got into the mix and he went straight for Ludwig Kaiser. That was good. The story that they've been been telling with that and uh i want to say i think and let me check my notes uh yeah kofi did eliminate uh Ludwig kaiser which was very very satisfi satisfying he eliminated uh Ludwig kaiser and then gunther came out right after that after he got eliminated and he's looking at him like what happened to you bro how did you get eliminated you're you're, you're a disappointment i love that and Obviously, uh, Kofi and um, Guther are supposed to have a match for the Intercontinental Championship on Monday Night Raw. So we'll see how things play out with that. So since we're talking about the men's Royal Rumble, we got to talk about the women's. And I enjoy the women's Royal Rumble match. Yeah, there were some low moments in the crowd. You know, it was kind of sitting on some of the entrants that came in. But the story that they were telling here is what was happening with... Um, with um, damage control, I want to say. Yeah, what was happening with them? You had Natalie come, uh, Natalia come out at number one. Naomi making her return. That was awesome at number two. Crowd was showing her so much love. Then uh, Bailey came out at number three. And Asuka showed up at number seven, which kind of confused Bailey for a little bit. She looked confused. Then Kyrie Sane showed up at number 11. And it was one of those things where they were trying to have a game plan, but it, it didn't ultimately work. And they both end up getting eliminated, the Kabuki Warriors, uh, roughly at the same time. Uh, shout out to R-Truth for being a gym throughout the show. He showed up in the Women's Royal Rumble match only to be eliminated by Nia Jax. And then he showed up in the Men's Royal Rumble match and he thought it was a tag team match. Fucking R-Truth. It's a national tre uh, treasure. But when things really started to pick up, and we and I, I called it before it happened, Nia Jax was pretty much destroying everybody, as I expected. But then Jay comes in. Jay Cargill makes her debut at number 28. And boy, they have made Jay Cargill feel like a megastar. They have made her feel important. When she came out, 
crowd chanted, holy shit, she looked good out there, she felt like she belonged, and bruh, this was fantastic. She picks up Nia Jax with ease, and she single-handedly eliminated Nia Jax. That's why they saved Nia Jax for that spot for Jay Cargill. And it's going to be very interesting to see where they go with that. I can see maybe Jade and, and Nia, that being, their, uh, being Jade's first feud. That was very, very entertaining. Liv Morgan returns from jail at number 30. I was okay with it. It, it didn't really bother me. I, I didn't feel like she was going to win anyway. Um, but it was cool to see Liv back. Um, and Jade and Bianca had this great standoff. They were, you know, manhandling <laughs> some other women. And then they looked at each other. And the crowd got excited. I got excited. Dub got excited. Everyone in the chat got excited. And then they ended up getting attacked separately. They didn't even put hands on each other. That was perfect. They didn't have to touch each other. That was fantastic. I love that. I'm Just the thought of them having a match together. I can't wait. Cannot wait. Uh, Jade ends up getting a lim uh, uh Jade ends up eliminating Becky and Naomi relatively quickly, which I thought was very interesting too. And then Bailey, Jade, and Liv end up being the last three women, and Bailey was able to eliminate both uh Jade and um and Liv Morgan, which I picked her to win. And she was in the match for one hour and three minutes. And it cuts to EO in the back watching. And she wasn't too happy about it. Because all the women in damage control have gold. I do think they're going to say she needs to face Rhea. But there's going to be a situation where she doesn't. And it's, it's going to be a situation where maybe she maybe here overhears them talking trash about Bailey or whatever. And she says, you know what? I'm done. Or maybe they turn on her and then she announces that she's going to face EO or something like that. I'm really interested in that. Bailey, EO, EO I'm all for it because it's going to turn Bailey into a baby face again. So I'm all for that. I'm the right person won in that one. Congrats to Bailey. Um, the Fatal 4-Away match was my least favorite match of the show. Even though there was some good stuff, I loved the, the spot of everybody jumping Roman Reigns at the beginning of the match. It was cool. This, you know, it's, to me, it, I felt, I felt like the match, you know, we relatively seen on SmackDown, except without Roman being involved. It was still enjoyable, but of course, Solo got involved. This was, it was a, a, a really nice false finish. Let me see if I have it in my notes. Uh, I don't even think I took it in my notes. There was a, a false finish spot um, where it looked like Roman was potentially about to lose. Okay, I think it was Randy had hit the RKO on everyone. He hit the RKO on AJ. Hit the RKO on LA Knight. And then he hit an RKO. It was a spear combination. Roman ran in for the spear. And they timed it perfectly. He hit the RKO on Roman. And Roman's out. It's, he's out. It's over. One. Two. Solo. Solo pulls him away. I was like, ah, oh, bruh. And, and that was a good false finish. There was some good false finishes in this match. Um. Obviously, Solo was going to get involved. No DQ. Even if it was no DQ, he was going to get involved. And towards the end, I felt like the ending was kind of uh, anticlimactic. Um, it was a situation where AJ Styles ended up getting hung up on the top rope. He was going for the phenomenal forearm. And I think Roman ended up pushing uh, LA Knight into the, to the rope where he got hung up. And then he ended up... Uh, I want to say he ended up spearing AJ Styles in the process for the one, two, three. It was it was very anticlimactic. I I was expecting a better finish, but it just it fell flat. Me personally, it fell flat. I wasn't I wasn't really a um a big fan of it mainly because once again we we've, we've kind of seen this with somebody's gonna get involved 
whether it's no DQ or DQ, we know someone's going to get involved. And it's just, it was, we knew, we knew. It was one of those type of things. It was still fun and enjoyable for what it was, but it was my least favorite match of the night. And then finally, the United States Championship match between Kevin Owens and Logan Paul. I really enjoyed this. KO was beating the living snot out of Logan Paul. Like, Logan was bleeding. His chest was red. He was beating the crap out of him. And credit to Logan. He was still putting in some good work. He was looks great out there. It's crazy how good he is in the ring. If only he wasn't scamming his subscribers in cryptocurrency. That's a, I don't know. But outside of the scamming apart, he was he looked great out there. And I called it. Logan's going to try to cheat in order to retain. And once again, this was that same situation when his homies was going to try to interfere. The ref saw it. And then that's when um, I want to say Austin Theory and uh, Grayson Waller come into the mix. And Austin Theory slides Logan Paul to brass knucks. Kevin Owens sees that. He gets the brass knucks. He hits Logan Paul with the brass knucks. And he's out. It's over. Ref one, two. And he sees Lo uh, KO with the brass knucks. And he's like, wait, you hit him with the brass knucks? And he calls for a disqualification. I like that finish. I like that finish because... It's not like it was with Ray where he was going to use the brass knucks and the ref wasn't going to see it. The ref saw it this time, and, but this time Kevin Owens had it. I like that. I, I like that finish. That was very different. And, of course, Kevin Owens being Kevin Owens as, you know, Logan Paul's getting his hands raised. He's like, nah, we not doing this. Proceeds to beat the living crap out of Logan Paul, throws him to the steel steps, and then throws him through the table, crowd goes crazy. I loved it. Logan retains as I expected, but this was still a fun match. Logan is still showing why he is very good in a wrestling ring, surprisingly. And I do think at some point, Logan and, and um, what's his name? Uh, LA Knight will cross paths once again. And we may have a LA Knight versus Logan Paul at WrestleMania, which I think a lot of us will want to see. And I think that's when he'll lose at WrestleMania. So we will see. We may get another Kevin Owens and Logan Paul rematch at Elimination Chamber. We'll see. But overall, I really enjoyed that match. And overall, I enjoyed um, this pay-per-view. This was fun. This was very entertaining. Um, if I had to rate this on a scale of 1 in 10... I'm going to most likely give this a solid 8. I gave this a solid 8 um, in my initial review um, on the uh, In The Clutch page for our live stream reaction. I'm going to give this a solid 8. I have fun with it. I know some people are not happy with Cody winning again. Hey, you know, that's that's your choice. For me personally, I enjoyed it. The Probably the match that really didn't live up to the hype and you know kind of let me down was the fatal four way it, it was okay in my opinion but um outside of that the women's royal rumble definitely delivered i like what they did with the men's royal rumble could i felt like some of the spots were potentially wasted but i did like what they were doing with some of the newer talent especially braun breaker i'm looking forward to what they do with him on the main roster and i'm okay with cody winning twice because guess what I do believe now, for sure, I do believe they're going to finally have him finish the story and uh, we're, we're going to see something, hopefully something special, something uh, memorable. So uh, we'll see how things play out. But comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite match from the uh, from this year's Royal Rumble. What was your least favorite match? If you have one, uh, what you rate the show on a scale of 1 to 10? What you guys are looking forward to the most? going into monday night raw and um this wrestlemania season but i appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on channel rose 150k i'm still young speedy youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all keeping me see y'all next one peace